Hey, learner. Ready for a really cool deep dive today? I think so. We're going to be talking about making data centers, you know, those uh, big energy hogs, yeah. more sustainable. Right. And get this, the answer might be hiding in plain sight. Interesting. Yeah, we've got a bunch of reports and studies here. Okay. All about this thing called combined heat and power. Okay. Or CHP for short. KCP. To not just run these data centers, but actually shrink their carbon footprint. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that's a. it's definitely a hot topic, right? Yeah, absolutely. We depend so much on data centers. We do. But all that data comes with a, a big energy demand. It's true. Right. It's true. Just think about it. All those servers storing, I don't know, everything. Oh, everything. There, running 24-7. That takes a lot of juice. It does. A lot of juice. But here's the thing. Data centers, they often have this built-in solution, like a need that CHP can perfectly address. Yeah, that's right. So traditional power plants, whether we're talking coal or natural gas, they waste so much energy as heat. Oh, yeah. And CHP systems can capture that heat. Okay. And actually put it to work. Wow. Good. Instead of just like, you know, letting it dissipate into the environment. It's like using, um, I don't know if you do a lot of cooking, but it's like using the, the leftover heat from your oven after you bake something to warm up the kitchen a little bit you know exactly yeah it's like it's like you're not letting that energy just go to waste you know you're being smart about it exactly and and we're not talking small efficiency gains here right like you know a traditional power plant maybe operates at less than 35 percent efficiency wow meaning like 65 percent of that energy is just lost as heat wow and you know natural gas plants they do a bit better but a chp plant with heat recovery we can hit up to 80% efficiency. That's incredible. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big difference. Yeah. Those numbers are really, they highlight the potential. Yeah. Especially for data centers. And we have this uh, CHP case study white paper here. Okay. And it, it goes into that, especially in the section about uh, combined power and heating systems for data centers and heat recovery and reuse, which we'll link in the show notes, of course. Of course. But um, turns out data centers... They're often located in these large buildings or campuses mm -hmm. that need heating anyway. Right. So it's like a perfect match. And and it's not just about heating either. I mean, yeah. all those servers, they generate a ton of heat themselves. Oh, that's right. Which needs to be cooled, right? Yeah. So CHP systems can actually be designed to power those cooling systems as well. Oh, wow. Using a process called absorption chilling. Okay, so we're talking about potentially what? Cutting greenhouse gas and emissions from data centers by like 50%. Potentially. Compared to using those dirtier fuels like coal or oil. Yeah. Just by implementing this one technology. It's a big deal. It's huge. It is. It is. And the paper also highlights how CHP can really improve a data center's power usage effectiveness or PUE. Right. And a lower PUE means a more efficient data center. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. So this white paper says that CHP could bring that PUE down to around 1.1. Wow. Which, to put that in perspective, like the average data center operates at a PUE of like 1.5 to 2. Yeah, so they're using like one and a half to twice the energy they need. Exactly. Just for computing. And that's a huge difference in energy consumption. It is. Cost savings, mm -hmm. environmental impact. Absolutely. It's really interesting. Yeah. And it highlights how CHP can contribute to this whole movement towards on-site microgrids mm -hmm. with data centers generating their own clean energy. Yeah. And not having to rely so much on the traditional power grid. Right, right. Talk about taking control of your energy destiny. Yeah. You're not you're not beholden to anybody, right? Exactly. Yeah. Although the paper does bring up a good point about the upfront cost of installing a CHP system. Sure. It can take more than six years to see a return on that investment. Okay. Which is, you know, longer than the industry ideal of like three to five years. Yeah, I mean the initial cost can it can be up there. You know, it's not insignificant. Right. But but when you look at the long term picture, you know, the cost savings, uh, the environmental benefits. Yeah. It starts to make a lot of sense. Totally. It's like playing the long game. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's like you got it. You got to be in it for the for the long haul. Exactly. Especially since those costs are probably going to come down. Absolutely. As the technology gets better and more widespread. As with. Yeah. As with anything. Right. The the more we the more it's adopted, the cheaper yeah. it's going to get. Absolutely. And and there are some really 
you know, great examples out there mm. that show how effective carbon capture can be, like this carbon capture opportunities for natural gas fired power systems. Source we've got here, it talks about the Bellingham Power Plant. That's the one that, that really blew my mind. It's pretty impressive. They managed to capture what, like 85 to 95 percent? Yeah, something like that. I mean, for over a decade. For over a decade of their CO2 emissions. That's, that's huge. It's incredible. Yeah, and they didn't just capture it. They actually purified it and sold it. What? Yeah, mainly to, I think, the food industry. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great example of how you know, carbon capture can really contribute to a circular economy mm. where where waste becomes a resource. It's like closing the loop instead of just releasing it into the atmosphere. Exactly. We're capturing it, we're using it. Yeah, and that's the kind of innovation that's driving this whole, you know, push towards a more sustainable energy future. Okay, ready for another layer of cool? I'm always ready. Okay, so this Future of Cogeneration report okay. talks about these things called flexible CHP systems. Oh, and basically, they can adjust their electricity production on the fly. Interesting. Based on demand, which is pretty cool. So it's like it's like a smart grid, in a sense. Kind of, yeah. It's it's like a smart CHP system. Okay. Because, you know, as we bring more renewable energy sources onto the grid, like solar and wind. Right, which are intermittent. Which right. come and go. It's exactly. Right, the sun's not always shining. Sadly. The wind is not always blowing. Nope. These flexible CHP systems, they can they can ramp up their output to fill in those gaps and make sure there's enough power. So it's like a backup system almost, but but better. Yeah. It's like having a like a hybrid car okay. for your energy grid. I like that. Right. It can seamlessly switch between different sources. Between gas and electric and... Depending on what's available and what's needed. Yeah, I like it. So it sounds like a win-win, right? Yeah, it does, but... But the report mentions that there are still some hurdles. There are always hurdles, right? Right. It wouldn't be fun if there weren't. Exactly. What are some of the challenges that we're facing here? Well, you know, the report, it highlights some of the financial and regulatory challenges. Like, there are some energy taxes that well, yeah. disincentivize flexibility, which seems a little backwards. It does. Why would we penalize something that could make our energy system better? Well, you know, a lot of these regulations were designed you know, decades ago right. for a much more centralized grid. Right. They haven't quite caught up with the distributed generation and the flexible technologies like CHP. It makes sense, mm -hmm. but it's something that we have to address if we want to move forward. Absolutely. So how do we fix that? How do we move past that? Well, the report suggests a couple of things. Okay. You know, one, we could reform those energy taxes. Okay. Make it a level playing field, so to speak. Okay. And then another thing is to develop what they call balancing markets, okay. which would actually reward power generators for their flexibility and their ability to help stabilize the grid. Oh, so instead of being penalized, you'd get rewarded. Exactly. Yeah. Incentivize the right behavior. I like that. Right. It makes a lot more sense. Right. It's like, you know, you want to encourage people to, to do the right thing. Absolutely. And and that's how we do it. And what about that power to heat concept that you mentioned? Oh, yeah. That sounds promising. So imagine, right, you've got all this excess electricity, mm -hmm. maybe from a data center running CHP, yeah. and you can capture that electricity and use it to heat homes and businesses nearby. Oh, wow. Instead of wasting it, you're creating this, you know, this more circular, efficient system. Turning a potential problem, you know, excess electricity and heat and turning it into a resource for the surrounding community. Exactly. Oh, That's cool. awesome. It's like, it's like we're solving multiple problems at once. It's like we're piecing together a puzzle. Right? It is, it is. We need all the right pieces. I do. To create that sustainable energy future. Absolutely. This has been a really, really cool deep dive so far. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. And we'll be right back to tie everything together after a quick break. And we're back. Okay, Learner, so we've talked about CHP, those impressive carbon capture numbers at Bellingham. And a lot of cool stuff. Really cool stuff. But I'm curious, you know, about those financial and regulatory hurdles we talked about. What are some of the specific challenges and how can we, how can we address them, you know, moving forward? Well, this Future of Cogeneration report, it highlights how energy taxes are structured. Okay. In a lot of places, they actually discourage flexibility. That seems kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. Why would we penalize something that makes our energy system more sustainable? Right. 
doesn't make a lot of sense. It's because a lot of these regulations, they were designed for a very different energy system, uh -huh. one that was much more centralized. Right. And they haven't really caught up with these new technologies like CHP. Yeah, it's like they're stuck in the past a little bit. A little bit, yeah. So how do we fix that? Well, the report suggests we could reform those energy taxes. Okay. Create a more level playing field for these flexible technologies. Makes sense. Another idea is developing what they call balancing markets, okay. where power generators are actually rewarded oh, for their ability to adjust output and stabilize the grid. So instead of getting penalized, you'd get rewarded for being flexible. Exactly. Yeah. Incentivize the behavior we want to see. I like that. Yeah. It makes way more sense. Right. It's a much more proactive approach. Absolutely. Mm. And what about that power to heat concept? Oh, yeah. That's a really cool idea. It sounded really interesting. Imagine, you know, capturing that excess electricity right. from a data center, maybe one running CHP, okay, and using it to heat homes and businesses nearby. That's amazing. Yeah. Instead of wasting it, we're creating a more circular, efficient energy system. So we're taking a potential problem, right. like excess heat and electricity, yeah. and we're turning it into a resource exactly. for the whole community. Yeah, That's awesome. We're solving like multiple problems at once. It's like we're putting together a puzzle, right? It is. And each piece brings us closer to that sustainable future we're all talking about. Absolutely. Every little bit helps. Okay, so we've talked about how data centers can use CHP to become more efficient, reduce their impact. Right, they can even become part of the solution. Exactly, but what if they could do even more? What if data centers, instead of just being these you know, energy hogs, could right. actually become hubs for clean energy you know, generation ADD consumption? It's a really interesting thought. Right, like what if they could be part of the solution yeah. to our energy challenges, not just contributing to the problem? Well, it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. Okay. I mean, you know, we already know data centers are often located strategically, right? Right. Near population centers to make sure that data access is fast. Makes sense. And, and they have this huge consistent demand for energy. That's true. But like, they're they're almost set up perfectly for this kind of transformation. Oh, you really are. Right. Yeah. So they've got the location. They've got the location. They've got the demand. They've got the demand. What if we could get them on clean energy? And that's where those technologies we were talking about come in. Okay. You know, CHP, the advances in renewables. Right. Data centers could not only generate their own clean power. Okay. They could potentially generate even more than they need. Wait, so you're saying they could actually pump energy clean energy back into the grid. Imagine the right. data centers, you know, instead of being a drain on the grid, right. they become these distributed clean powerhouses. That would be incredible. It would be huge. I mean, it would take, you know, collaboration between right. the government, industry leaders, energy providers. Yeah, it would be it would be a big change. A big change, but uh, think about the benefits. Yeah, what are some of the benefits that we could see? Well, you know, obviously, Reducing greenhouse gas emissions, right. that's a big one. But, you know, we could also see new jobs right. created in the clean energy sector. That's awesome. And overall, we could create a much more resilient and sustainable energy infrastructure. That's really what we're talking about here, right? Ahead. Building a better system for everybody. Exactly, exactly. So, Lerner, we've explored how CHP, some innovative thinking, a little bit of, you know, ingenuity, mm -hmm could transform the way we power our data-driven world, which is really cool. It's all about connecting those dots, right? It is. And, you know, we barely scratched the surface here. Just the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. And we hope that this deep dive has, you know, sparked your curiosity, given you a new perspective on what's possible. Absolutely. So, so keep exploring those reports. Keep asking those questions. Keep learning. Keep learning. And until next time, keep those brain gears turning.